Bueno, welcome everybody to this week's episode of Bandle Club. I am here with Max Willem Fischer and Eni Solera, who are Duo Arco Aire. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about what you've just played? Uh, so this was a piece by Owen Salome. <laughs> it's called Pataconeando that he wrote for this duo um, in memory of a lovely breakfast that I made him once. It says that in the music. In memory of a lovely breakfast. <laughs> uh, Pataconeando is like a bit of a, a joke, a tango joke. Can you, can you explain the joke? There's a really famous tango called Taconiando. Uh-huh. And so I wrote in uh, uh, oh. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought you got that from the beginning. No. Um, <laughs> a- Amy, Amy's favorite food is patacones, which is yeah. where you get like a big a platano, which is a sort of like starchy banana, and you fry it, and then you squash it and fry it again. Fry it. It's kind of crunchy and tasty and delicious. Amy, uh, Amy made me a breakfast of this once, so I wrote her a tango called Pataconiando. And we started practicing the piece, and I had not had patacones before, so I had to obviously have patacones as a way of preparing. <laughs> it, was, it was preparation. Preparation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, can you tell us a bit about the duo? Cello and bandoneon, not super common. No, I don't think um, I've ever actually heard another piece written explicitly for cello and bandoneon. Well, we have eight. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one thanks to you. Um, no, we love the combination uh, because I think both instruments in tango are very versatile. We can Everyone in tango plays lots of different roles, often in one measure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I always feel very lucky on the cello that I can play very low bass lines, and I've learned a lot from studying with basses. And I can also play as high as anyone really wants to hear, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> And the bandoneon also has this range, and but she can play a lot of notes at once. But unlike a piano, she can hold them and shake them and change them. And I think that's part of what really attracted us to sure. the bandoneon at the beginning is that kind of yeah, the ability to sustain notes, singing chords. Yeah. yeah, and we've known each other for a long time in different different groups and things, and um, to to try and put our sounds together to find the ways to hold notes together and combine different colors and decide when to mix our tones and when to separate is been a, a, just a really wonderful exploration. And I think there's just a huge amount of possibility there. And in a duo, everything's very exposed. It's, yeah. like, it's like playing a solo, but you're also beholden to someone else, you know? <laughs> and, so, and y'all wrote us a lot of notes. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. I took out notes. Yeah, I, I, it's okay. <laughs> not just you, not just you, don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's, I think Amy, Amy sort of said something along, what was it that you told all of the composers? I told the composers, so uh, Max and I are recording, oh, I'm spilling coffee. Uh, Max and I are recording an album. Uh, we just recorded five songs in Buenos Aires. We're going to do three more in the United States. And I essentially told, I asked one composer per song, and I said, think of any conversation or experience that you had with me and whatever comes out is what comes out. And so it's been really interesting to see what the composers came up with, what came out of them, and so it's it's really a very diverse album. Who, who else is, uh, who are the others? Well, the other composers, um, Ramiro Boero, Ramiro Gasho, Pablo Jaurena, Eva Wolf, eh, Owen Salome, Adam Tooley, eh, Ezekiel Mantega, and... Adrian. Huh? Adrian. Adrian Enriquez. Ah, awesome. Yeah. I feel very honored to have been included in the in the group. I, I feel I feel like um I just lucked out because I sent you a composition right at the point no. when you were. It wasn't, it wasn't luck. <laughs> I said I said Amy a composition. I said hey I've just finished writing this this thing for four bandoneons and she said that's great. I'm gonna get you to write a piece for my duo. And send me some money the next day and I was like great. No, it was I chose the the composers for I did, I asked different friends but um like Max and Max and I have known each other for many years and. You know, he's been there for my journey in Bandoneon. Max saw me when I was, like, learning Bandoneon. <laughs> and so there's been very important people in this process for me. And so I wanted to ask people who who helped me. And you were very integral in that my stay in Buenos Aires, and we became very good friends. So I wanted to invite people who really knew me and knew the journey. And, and you know, it's been this, for me, that's what this album represents. It's a lot of, you know... And we like that it's, it was important to us that we had uh, both sort of teachers and people we, we really knew very well and, and also younger musicians mm-hmm. since that's who we are. And 
you know, we're always in yeah. sort of a learning. It's 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 like really fun rocky music, but it's also always a learning process as well. You know, in in general, is the repertoire? Like, are you aiming towards having mostly new tango as your kind yes. of core repertoire? Because I know you you've got some. I saw some of your other arrangements of things like La Bordona, and, yeah. but that's sort of moving out of the repertoire in general. Or? Always a learning process. <laughs> yeah. And yes and no. I. Max knows, I, I care about contemporary tango. I care about what's happening now. I don't want tango to be a museum. I love what happened before. It's beautiful music, and we play it because it's, we need to learn how to play what happened before. And we need to learn how to play tango in our duo. Yes. How to adopt that for the instruments and the yeah. sounds. And for the record, we love it. We love you it. You know, it's just that also contemporary music is really important to us. Yes. And we feel that since even this instrumentation is, is a newer, an unusual concept, we're interested in what one can do with it, and it's something different for composers to think about. We like to think, yeah, you know. yeah, and yeah, it's very, impo- it's very important to us mm-hmm. of yeah. now what's happening now, so this genre can keep moving forward. And so you're sort of, uh, I suppose, getting to the pointy end of the of this particular album, where you're, yeah. you're just about finished recording and you're gonna go through the whole mixing, mastering, all that. What do you think's next? What's the next project? Are you not ready to think about that yet? <laughs> <laughs> I am thinking about it. We of course you are, Amy, we know. <laughs> we have different ideas. We love a hearing from new composers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of the great things now is as we're playing these pieces and as the album gets out is we're hearing from more and more people, which is really wonderful to yeah. hear how, how many people are participating in this music, in this new active live music now. And um, we, we, like, you know, we like singers, we like composers, we like different things, so we'll see. Yeah. Yep. We, we want we want people to send us the music. Okay. So anyone who wants to send us music, <laughs> send us music. Yeah. Um, and for me, uh, besides this duo, I have another duo with Julio Avalos, which was a Bach album. So uh, my next album, I want to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to study a million notes. I want to play half notes. I've got to go ding. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so my next album I'm thinking of I, I want to continue arranging and composing I'm very new at it but I really like it and so I told Max I'm like I'd like to learn to arrange for cello but I want to do baby steps so I want like something simple and easy something to kind of that I can resolve in a few bring months bring you and the audience some relief in amongst all the yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's always a wonderful mix of what are we studying what are we learning who are we learning from and what are we doing ourselves like what are we putting forward we're putting forward a strong interest in contemporary music we're putting forward a different instrumentation I think cello has been in tango for well over a century but it's not always the front man mm-hmm. and whatever reason for that you know now we're working at, you know I think there's a lot that can be done just with the cello in mm-hmm. terms of tango sounds and, and incorporating that. So we want to make that point. Sorry, I want to make that point. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so we've got a, we've got a, a, a lot of things to, to look forward to. We're looking forward to listening to it all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Thank you. Whenever the disc is uploaded onto Spotify and whatever, um, please send us the link so that yes. we can share it with the share it with the club community. Yes. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe to all our videos. Check out all the other things we've done. We've got another video with Amy in her other duo. Um, and we'll put all of the links to Amy and Max's stuff below. Uh, if you want to support the channel and you're not in Argentina, you can uh, support us on Patreon. And if you are in Argentina, we have a cafecito set up, which is a different support system. And uh, we're on all of the social networks. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.